Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me. I have finally got the Sky Shed pod up and running. So join me in this video where I give you a quick tour of my new observatory. Okay, so this is my new Sky Shed Pod Observatory. And for those who don't follow my channel, this is a secondhand observatory that I picked up a few months back. So I finally got it up and running in the garden um, and I thought it was about time that I give you a quick tour. Okay, hi everyone, welcome inside my Sky Shed Pod Observatory. Um, so I just thought I'd show you around and give you a quick tour of the observatory itself. So my main mount, which is going to stay inside here, all nicely polar aligned, is the Ioptron CEM60. So this is on the tri pier, which is a very sturdy pier. Um, will hold its polar alignment no, prop no problem. So all I have to do is come outside, open the roof of the observatory, and I am good to start imaging. Now on top of it at the moment, I have the ASCAR 400, the FRA 400, absolutely love this telescope. I don't think it's gonna stay in here. I think I'm gonna put my Celestron Edge HD on this mount and have that as a permanent setup. Um, and this can go on my other mount in the garden. So this observatory comes with three bays. Um, so I've got one bay there, one bay there, and one bay behind, as you can see. Lots of people use these bays for storage and for computers, etc. But most of my imaging is done with the ASI Air. So I don't actually need these pods, um, but it is nice to have, I guess. I probably will fill them up eventually. Okay, so a couple of features of the observatory. I do have power and ethernet out here, so I put these in about a year ago with the, the aim to get an observatory and they have come in very handy now. So I have um, power and an ethernet wire coming up from below the patio um, and they go into one of the pods and then back across into this box here which controls all my power. I have an ethernet port on the side of the mount which is really handy because then that can go up to the ASI Air Plus and I do not need to then uh, connect to the ASI Air directly. I can connect from the uh, comfort of my house. So I will quickly open this box and show you how I'm actually powering the rig. Okay, so coming from one of the power sockets, I have an adapter, which is plugged in to the Nevada power station. I believe this is the PSW30. So this is controlling all of the power for my rig. So I have one power source coming off this, and this goes up to the underside of my mount here. And then that gives power to the underside of the saddle. So these power sources here can power things such as my camera or the ASI Air, which is really handy and a great feature, one that I absolutely love about this mount. I also have another power cord coming off the, the Nevada power box, which goes up into my uh, Ioptron CEM mount. And that provides a really stable power source for the mount, so should help with things such as guiding. As I mentioned here, this is the ethernet port or the ethernet adapter. So I have a socket there going, that's directly into the router inside the house. And then just a wire which plugs directly into the ASI Air. So a really nice uh, power and ethernet uh, solution, one that keeps the mount running all night long. As you can probably see, I have put some flooring in. These are just some rubber mats, which uh, make it slightly more comfortable in the, the uh, dome itself, make it slightly warmer for the feet as well. And pick these up from Halfords and they were reasonably cheap, just cut them to size and they fit quite nicely. You might be able to see over here, I do have a de dehumidifier in the pod. This is the Pro Breeze 10 litre dehumidifier, I believe. Again, I will put the link and the description um, in the comments below. So I haven't had to use this much at the moment, um, but I have heard that 
with these sorts of pods there could be an issue with humidity and condensation inside so I can have this set up to a target humidity once it reaches that it will turn off so hopefully um, I don't have to use that too much but it's nice to know that I can control the humidity inside the dome if needs be okay so the dome itself obviously opens and closes which is really nice and easy quite light to actually open and close as well but it also rotates 360 degrees so I can rotate this dome in any angle with just a quick push so that gives me quite a nice view of the sky now one limitation to a pod like this is obviously when you're imaging right at the zenith the dome sometimes gets in the way so if you're shooting straight up the dome could be a slight issue now to get around that there is something called the zenith table so you can get quick release brackets for the whole roof and then you can push the whole of this dome off the back and that's something that I plan to put in um, sooner rather than later. So when I picked up this dome second hand the previous owner actually had a set of the quick release brackets so I plan to put them on and then make a DIY zenith table. So if I do ever plan to shoot directly up right at the zenith I can open the dome, I can unclip the, uh, the quick release brackets and then I can push everything back onto the zenith table which will open up the whole night sky for me. As you might have picked up on the microphone it is a very windy day today um, and it's supposed to be quite windy tonight as well and that's another advantage of a, a dome it might block out some of that wind so hopefully I can have better guiding when it is very windy. But yeah that's uh, that's a, just a very quick tour of the dome. If any of you have got any questions or suggestions about what I could do to improve it please do let me know in the comments below. Now like I said I'm hoping to get first light from the dome tonight. Um, it's supposed to be clear for a few hours um, so hopefully I can capture a couple of hours of data. Now one target that's in a really good position is the California Nebula. I have shot this image before but I was never fully satisfied with it and it's because I didn't have enough data. So my plan is to shoot with the same equipment so the Ascar um, FRA 400, the 2600 mono and the Antlia narrowband filters um, and then combine the data I capture tonight and over the next few nights with the data I captured a few years ago. So hopefully I've got first light to show you from the dome. So I'm going to close the dome lid now because it has actually just started to drizzle um, and then yeah hopefully it clears up, hopefully it stays clear tonight and I can capture first light. Okay, so it's dark enough now to start imaging and this is why I wanted the observatory. All I have to do, come outside, open up the lid and I'm ready to start imaging. I don't have to polar align, I just have to turn the scope on, connect the iPad up and slew to my target. Oops. And there you go, just like that, within five minutes, I'm up and running and ready to start imaging. Um, so I'm gonna let this run now and see how much data I can capture. Okay, so it's a few nights later and the observatory is already coming in handy. So I've not been home at all all day. I've actually been down in Bristol filming some foxes and I've got some quite nice uh, footage of those foxes. Um, so I might put a little video together and tag it onto the end of this uh, YouTube video. Um, but I was driving home and I noticed it was looking quite clear. Now, I've checked the forecast and it says I should have about an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours max before the clouds are definitely going to roll in. Now there's no way I would have set up 
So I wouldn't have come down, I wouldn't have had time to get the mount out of the garage, to balance, to polar align, to set all the wires up. There's just no way that I would be imaging tonight without this observatory. But just being able to come outside within five minutes uh, starting to image might be able to give me that extra hour, hour and a half of data. So yeah, really excited that this uh, observatory is up and running and yeah, it's already starting to pay dividends. Okay, so I've just shut the lid on the dome and I got about an hour and 15 minutes before the clouds rolled in. So that's data I wouldn't have if it wasn't for the observatory. So I'm really happy with how it's working for me so far. Um, I'm hoping to capture about 10, 15 hours worth of data to add to my previous data on the California Nebula. So I'll put that image up for you now. I've also managed to edit together a very short video of some foxes um, that I was capturing down in Bristol. So if you're interested interested in wildlife take a look at that at the end of the video but thank you so much for watching I do really appreciate it if you've liked this video please do hit that like button if you've got any questions let me know down below and I will see you in the next video I call home is here.